You're listening to the Three Feet Radio Show with Ben Carbonaro and Luke Herbert. From our studios come special guests and netball commentary, exclusively on YouTube. Good morning and welcome again to another edition of the Three Feet Radio Show. Joining me in the studio is my co-host, Luke Herbert. G'day, Luke. G'day, Ben, and get us underway on this special edition of the show, even though it's a little shorter than usual. It most certainly is a special edition of the show. Today we'll be talking with both Jolene Henry and Laura Langman from the New Zealand Silver Ferns. The reason why it's a shorter show is due to media demand of the Silver Ferns players heading into the Glasgow Commonwealth Games, and we'll be speaking to them from their training venue. All right, first of all, Laura, could you tell us a bit about your day job as an accountant? <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, I have a great employer, um, Deloitte in Hamilton. And, um, yeah, pretty much when I'm not at netball or I'm not training, I'm trying to get as much work experience or work done um, as I can there. So um, they have been fantastic um, through um, my first 18 months um, on the job. And I thoroughly enjoy having a great balance between netball and um, my time there. Yeah, and it's interesting at Deloitte, actually, because one of the reserve defenders for the Melbourne Vixens in Amy Steele, she also works at Deloitte, but here in, here in Australia, in Melbourne. Oh, fantastic. I didn't know that. Yeah, it's a small world. It is. Very small. Great yep. firm. Looking ahead to Glasgow, it's a pretty settled Silver Ferns lineup with not many changes. What sort of things has Y been working on with the team in the lead-up to your gold medal defence? Uh, yeah, I think the, the key kind of work on has been clarity, um, pretty much in all our um, processes and strategies that we want to do. Um, so in terms of off the court and on the court, so it's been a very much so a d- attention to detail, leaving no um, stone unturned, ensuring everyone understands um, y- you know what we're doing on a daily basis. And oh, yeah, we've covered a lot of stuff over the past two weeks, and we're in our final New Zealand camp now, so it's been great. And just while we're speaking of the Silver Fern squad, can you tell us sort of about the advantages of having a fairly settled squad in terms of the players that you're used to training and playing with? Yeah, obviously we've got um, a very seasoned um, campaign um, team, um, very experienced, um, and also I think a really good balance of um, youth as well. So, um yeah, I think that is a real added advantage that um, potentially we're not starting from scratch and we can build on the progress that we made last year in Constellation Cup. So, yeah, that, that is um advantage, but you still, um, you know, we had, had big lessons to learn and um, from 2013 in terms of our ability to beat Australia uh, more than once, um, where we've been found wanting on a number of occasions. So, um, yeah, it, it is good um, and it's something that um, we're kind of um, just building on. You say building on Laura. How is um Lani Leota fitted back into the Silver Ferns lineup so far? Oh, she is phenomenal. I think any other mothers that have children and then come back and play elite netball are um simply amazing. Um, you she doesn't even look like she's been away. Um, she, her feeding and her finesse um on the ball is is second to none. Um, and yeah, her experience and her get in, get out, get the job done. Um, is a really asset um, to our team, so it's great to have her back. And just one last one too from me, Laura. Will you make a decision regarding um, ANZ Championship um, once Glasgow's done? Yeah, um, obviously first and foremost is Tom Gaines, so um, if the opportunity presents to get that um, sorted prior, great, I'll take it. If not, yeah, I'm more than happy to make the decision after Tom Gaines. Just switching gears here before we have to wrap up the interview. You predominantly play at centre, but do you enjoy playing wing attack? Yeah, I do enjoy um, having a wee run at wing attack. It's, I find it extremely um, challenging position, um, but I predominantly my favourite would be um, at centre where I get the best of both worlds. So, yeah, don't mind having a run around, but enjoy going back on centre. All right. Thanks very much for joining us, Laura. Awesome. I appreciate it. Cheers. Thanks, guys. See ya. Thanks. Bye. We are now talking with Jolene Henry, and we're just going to start off with the Commonwealth Games here. You're about to go to your second Commonwealth Games. Does it feel any different from when you went to your first back in 2010? Yeah, no, it does. It feels very different. You know, Delhi was a very different environment um, with lots of kind of questions posing around it in terms of security and whether or not they were going to have facilities ready. Um, It was still very exciting, but I guess... In the here and now, you know, Glasgow is pretty exciting. We went there in January, even though it was bloody freezing. 
Um, we're reassured that it's there summer, so that the temperature's in the 20s. Um, but I guess for us, this is the, one of the pinnacle events of, of our sport. It doesn't kind of get any better than this. And an opportunity to win a gold medal um, certainly has everyone very excited. Jolene, what's it like switching to silver ferns mode where players who are usually your opponents in the ANZ Championship become teammates? It probably takes a little while to, to readjust again, does it? Or? No, not really. It's quite seamless, actually. Like, um, you see most of them all the time anyway, and when you're playing against them, you don't actually see them as your teammate. You see them as an opponent. Does that make sense? So it, it seems pretty seamless. And even when we're in camp and you're playing against someone, that they're kind of no longer your friend or your teammate. They're your opposition. So it's really hard, um, really easy, I should say, to, to switch hats. Um, I think that a lot of us take our um, kind of processes and policies that we have here in the Silver Ferns back to our, our own franchise environments anyway. So, yeah, I, I don't find it um, very difficult at all. And just switching gears here, and this is a topic Ben and I have chit-chatted a bit about off-air a fair bit, but there are several players in the hands of championship that combine being a mum with playing, you know, at the yeah. top level. Um, how do you find the balance between the two? It is pretty challenging, I'm not going to lie, and I don't think that I could do it without um, an amazing family support. Like, so that's my partner, my parents, his parents, you know, his his kind of sisters. I kind of have a really, really big team behind me that allow me to get out there and train every day and, you know, be away for, for nights or days or weeks sometimes. So that in itself can be very challenging, but I guess that the real hard part is knowing that you're going to leave them for a month or five or six weeks. And I guess I'm reassured by my parents that he won't remember. <laughs> he won't even probably notice that I'm gone. You know, it's more you and, and, and how you um, think about it. But my partner, and, you know, he's, I don't think he's that wise, but he thinks he is. But um, he always tells me that, you know, our son won't remember um, whether or not I've been gone for a few days. He'll remember what I've achieved. So I just need to suck it up and go out there and make him proud. It's interesting, Jolene, with uh, major tournaments like the Commonwealth Games and the World Championships, there's always a sort of an Aussie flavour or a Kiwi flavour to other countries' teams as well. And I see, I think it's either Gail or Paula Parata that is coaching oh, yeah. um, that is coaching Scotland. So it'll be interesting. Hopefully you'll get to catch up with her. But I think also it shows the influence of New Zealand and Australian netball in helping to develop the game in lesser countries in, in some ways. Yeah, yeah, I think that um, Netball Australia and Netball New Zealand have done an outstanding job at trying to bring up, you know, um, other countries and develop their, their kind of netball. And I think part of that is sending our coaches and our players over there to help bring them up to speed, so to speak. And, I mean, all you have to do is look at the likes of Malawi, who, you know, were able to come and tour to Australia and New Zealand and, and have some of their players in our ANZ competition. And I, I reckon in a couple of years, you know, they'll be even better. And it's just really, I, you know, Jamaica, you look at Jamaican players that have been able to play in the ANZ champs and as I understand it, Jill McIntosh is now over there helping to make it prepare for Commonwealth Games. So I think in that instance, you know, they're very fortunate to have, you know, such awesome people on board and be able to develop them so that, you know, we can make netball a, a bit more bit more than New Zealand and Australia and England, I guess, at the moment. Um, I'm not saying that I'd like to change that any time too soon because I think that there, um, there's nothing that, from a player's perspective, that beats a New Zealand-Australia match, you know. The type of physicality that the Australian players bring, the real want for the ball, and they're prepared to do anything to win, and that's something that, you know, you can really look at and, I guess, admire. And just before we wrap up, can you briefly tell us about, we're winding back the clock here, the old Coca-Cola Cup days when you played for the Western Flyers? Oh, yeah, good Lord. Um, that was a while ago. <laughs> um, well, what did you want to know about it? You just wanted me to reflect on it, or...? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Just reflect, just reflect on it. Yeah, just talk about, um, in some ways, in a good way, you could say the good old days, wasn't it? Well, absolutely. I think the whole nature of the best, I guess, has has changed completely. You know, no longer is it you could go for a blooming twenty-five minute jog and you'd be ready to take the court. You know, there's so much that's going on behind the scenes in terms of, you know, sports science and, you know, um, physiology and just all the stuff you know, that goes on behind the scenes that you don't often get to see. But I guess all you have to do is, is look at an international match that was played perhaps during that, you know, 2000, the year of 2000 to now and see that there is a massive difference. And I guess that all just reflects in how people are approaching the game, the work that the management teams and 
um, sporting organisations have done to see how they can take the sport that little bit further. It's just neat to be a part of. And it's funny that you asked that because I was in the gym this morning and I thought, I mean, I wonder what the team's going to be like in 15 years and whether or not they're going to be, you know, laughing at what we used to do and how, <laughs> you know, we think we're quite, you know, up with the play now and how they're going to have a little bit of a, a chuckle at us in, in, in a few, in a little while. All right, then, Jolene, thanks very much for joining us and good luck for Glasgow. Thank you very much. Thanks to Jolene Henry and Laura Langman for joining us today and what is a busy time for them ahead of the Glasgow Commonwealth Games. Join us again for another edition of the Three Feet Radio Show. You've been listening to the Three Feet Radio Show with Ben Carbonaro and Luke Herbert. Tune in next time for more special guests and netball commentary exclusively on YouTube.